If you don't know Mel Robbins, your mind and soul are in for a treat. She spent decades helping other people get what they want in life. Mel's a best-selling author. She runs a female-led media company, and the Mel Robbins podcast is not to be missed. She's also a motivational speaker with one of the most watched TEDx talks in the world. I'm talking 29 million views. Mel knows a thing or two about how to get unstuck, and her five-second rule, it is a game changer. This is a woman whose life work is to make your life better, lighter, and to help you and me make space. I have to say I'm very excited to be talking to you today. You are like a motivational pill. Like I want to swallow <laughs> it. Did motivational speaking kind of just come through you quickly? How did that come to be? Oh, um, no, it was a huge yeah. accident. I believe my story is one that is evidence that something greater is at work mm. because I all of my success in the personal development space came from personal crisis. I always joke that I am a life-tested expert because everything that I share requires me to first screw up my own life. And, um, you know, I invented this thing called the five-second rule mm -hmm. out of desperation mm -hmm. to help me get out of bed when I had crushing anxiety and we were 800 grand in debt with three kids under the age of 10. Mm -hmm. And I was unemployed. And I shared it uh, on a stage in 2011. Your mind can process a facial expression in 33 milliseconds. It can move pretty damn quick. The other thing that it does very quickly is if you have one of those little impulses that are pulling you, if you don't marry it with an action within five seconds, you pull the emergency brake and kill the idea. It was the first speech I had ever given in my entire life on a stage. So if you've ever seen my TEDx talk, yes, I saw it. That's a 21 minute long panic attack, Hoda. Are you kidding? No, no. I was so I didn't mean to share the five second rule. I yeah. forgot how to end the speech. And you just threw it in at the and end. I threw it in at the end. So we're going to unpack everything. Yep. People are thinking about changing their life, but people feel stuck. So I know um, I've felt stuck many, many times. And some people say, well, this is just me. This is like the space that I'm in right now. I can't get out. I'm trapped. But you believe like change can happen. It just has to be like a deliberate kind of action. Yes. Any human being can change. Yeah. Period. And stuck does not mean you have stopped. Oh. Stuck is a signal. Yeah. Stuck is a signal wired into your soul and your DNA. And that signal is trying to tell you something very simple. Mm. It's trying to tell you, Hoda, that you have stopped growing. You as a human being are designed to grow and change and evolve through your whole life. And so we think stuck means a huge existential crisis, mm -hmm. and that's why we become paralyzed. When I tell people the fastest way to get unstuck is to sign up for a class or to volunteer, to pursue a hobby. How does that work? Like, how does that unstick you? What it does is it gets you out of the trap of thinking yeah. about being stuck. Yeah. And it puts you in motion. Mm -hmm. You're not going to fix anything by thinking about it. You actually solve problems and change your life by taking action. Mm -hmm. And most of us are stuck in our thoughts mm -hmm. instead of pushing ourselves forward to take action. When you make a decision, are you a gut person? Are you a pro-con? Let me write it down and I'm going to write my pros and cons. Or are you kind of spirit-driven? Let me just see what this feels like from a from a much higher place than where we are. So if I have to make a really important yeah. decision, the way that I read my gut is this way. So I think about the decision I'm going to make, decision uh -huh. A, decision B. If the decision feels expansive, yeah. doesn't mean I want to do it doesn't mean it's easy. And if it feels energizing, like I might grow, and like there's something inside you that opens your heart a little, yeah. it's a yes. It's a yes. If I start to feel depleted, mm. if I start to feel like I'm shrinking, mm -hmm. if I feel the energy shift, it is an absolute no. And mm. see, the thing that I have learned over and over and over again is that everybody's gut is correct. Mm. People's issue, Hoda, is they don't listen to it. Hmm. So you think everyone's gut is correct? I do. I do. I Because ask anybody that has been in a string of terrible relationships. Yeah. And what you ask them is, when did you know that this was not the right relationship yeah. with you? 
And they knew months, years and before they ever ended it. They knew in their gut that it wasn't right, mm -hmm. but they stayed trapped in their head trapped instead in of it. taking action. What is the action step you take? First step is actually paying attention yep. that you do want to change it. And yep. being miserable is the perfect reason to change something, <laughs> yeah. okay? Yeah. And if you don't know what you want, all you need to know to change, Hoda, is I don't want this. So does it have to be, because a lot of people are looking for a purpose, like I'm working this job on the assembly line, but I know this is not my purpose. Mm -hmm. So you think that your purpose is a big lofty thing. So you don't want to leave that thing for something that isn't what you believe your calling is. So let me talk about passion and purpose, mm -hmm. because people yeah, collapse good. these two. Yeah. So passion is another word for energy. Okay. That's all that it is. If you think about the things that you're passionate about, yeah. you're passionate about them because they make you feel energized. Yeah. yeah. That's it. So passion is for you. Purpose is what you give to the world. And I think everybody's purpose is exactly the same. Which is? To share your authentic self, mm. to share your story, mm. to share your love with other people. Mm. And we are so trapped in our self-doubt, in mm -hmm. our thoughts that beat us down, mm -hmm. that we are not fulfilling our purpose because we are not allowing ourselves to show up as who we truly are. All of us come with heavy baggage mm -hmm. um, that we carry. You carried a lot. To be a child who was sexually abused and who was kind of voiceless. Yes. When did you find it? Mm, I found a voice with myself mm -hmm. when I discovered the five second rule. Yeah. Because I discovered a simple tool that shut down the critic. Tell us that, because that, that, this, is, this is big. So it's really a simple idea. And the simple idea is this. Let's, let's use the five-second rule with food as an example. Mm -hmm. So the, the theory is if you drop food on the floor, the floor contaminates the food in five seconds. Mm -hmm. It's junk science. It depends what's on the floor. But nevertheless, mm -hmm. this brain trick works this way. If you think about something for more than five seconds, your brain contaminates your motivation to act. We all have a habit of hesitating, Hoda. It's this subtle moment where you know exactly what you need to do. You need to go outside for a walk. You need to turn off the TV and go to the gym. You need to get up from the couch and have the hard conversation. Mm -hmm. And instead of just doing what we need to do, this is what psychologists call having a bias toward action, mm -hmm. all of us hesitate for just a second. Mm -hmm. Inside this five second window of hesitation, you go from conscious thought to subconscious. Mm -hmm. This part of your brain that puts you in autopilot, this part of the brain where all your self-doubt, where your patterns of worrying, of procrastinating, mm -hmm. of being perfect, it all takes over. Mm. We've all had that experience of you have a moment where you feel inspired and isn't it interesting that five seconds later self-doubt creeps in. Mm -hmm. And so the five second rule, all you do is in a moment where you feel yourself hesitating, procrastinating, beating yourself up, whatever the old pattern is, just count backwards. and. Five, four, three, two, one. The backwards part is critical. This does not work if you count up. Hmm. Does not work if you go one, two, three, four, five, and this has to do with the science. So the five second rule when you count backwards, five, four, three, two, one, it's what habit researchers call a starting ritual. It's a little hack that you can use, a positive trigger. And by the time you get to one, you now have the part of the brain that helps you change, that helps you mm -hmm. learn new behavior, that helps you act with courage and confidence, engaged and then you move you talked about there's like a the very very first decision you make when you when you open your eyes mm -hmm. like there's one decision you make right away and you realize that your day is made or broken by what yeah happens there's one. one habit that will change your life mm -hmm. just one and it is do not sleep with your phone mm -hmm. because the one decision everybody makes that kills your productivity kills your focus tanks your mental health is before you get yourself right. You grab your phone and check in with the world. Hmm. And that means you gave your most important commodity, your time and your attention, to things that don't matter. What should you do with that 10 minutes, do you think? Use a five-second rule. Five, four, three, two, one. Get out of bed. Do not lay there like a human pot roast, marinating in fear, <laughs> staring at the ceiling. Get out of bed. Second thing I want you to do, make your bed. Wait, don't hit snooze, though? Can you hit? No, you shouldn't. And there's, a, there's actually a neurological reason why. Oh. So people who hit the snooze button, based on the research, when you drift back into yeah. sleep, it triggers your brain to go into a sleep cycle that typically lasts between 75 and 90 minutes. 
And when oh. the alarm goes back off in five minutes, five minutes, yeah. you're in what they call a state of sleep inertia. Oh, so you're all. Oh, it impacts all... your productivity for okay. four hours. OK, so don't do that. OK, do then, not do this. then make your bed, make your bed, because it is a way to keep a small promise to yourself. Mm -hmm. It's also a way to have a nice place to come back to, like mm -hmm. a gift tonight. Mm -hmm. It's a simple way to build a mm -hmm. little discipline. Mm -hmm. The third thing I want you to do when you go to the bathroom is I want you to look in the mirror and I want you to add a high five in the mirror to your morning routine. A high five to yourself? Yes. Okay. There's a reason why. Okay. We did this massive study. 50% of men and women cannot look at themselves in the mirror in the morning. Mm. And the rest of us glance at ourselves in the mirror and mm -hmm. focus on what we hate. Mm -hmm. If you physically raise your hand without saying a word mm -hmm. and you raise your hand to the mirror, mm -hmm. something crazy happens. A lifetime of positive neurological programming mm -hmm. that has been attached to the act of giving a high five to other people mm -hmm. gets aimed back at you. Mm -hmm. Wow. The next thing I want you to do is simply take five minutes, the remaining five minutes that you have, and do some kind of mindset practice. And as the close of the practice, before you look at your phone, mm -hmm. I want you to decide what is one thing that matters to me today mm. that I'm going to make progress on. That's it. If you simply select one thing that mm -hmm. matters to you, it mm -hmm. could be I'm going to read the paper this morning. Right. could be I'm going to I'm going to spend some time with Hoda yeah. this yeah. morning. That's yeah. what I'm going to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I like that. If you set that intention and you simply make a little progress. I'm not even asking you to get it done. You just roll just it forward an something. inch. The studies show it creates a deeper sense of fulfillment and meaning in your life because you feel a sense of control because you're actually seeing yourself mm -hmm. take the actions that are proving to you that yes, in fact, you do come first. Mm -hmm. Yes, in fact, you matter. Yes, in fact, I believe in myself. And mm -hmm. yes, the things that are important to me are a priority. And then when you look at your phone, we know what happens. Everything else rushes to the front yeah. of the line yeah. and you won't feel so resentful because you took that time for yourself. That's brilliant. By the way, and it's so easily done because mm -hmm. I do a morning practice too and I keep my phone away from me because I want to, I get up, I use an old fashioned alarm clock, I take yep. my shower, I do some meditation and prayer and scribble awesome. a little bit, just a few things here and there. But if I don't do it, if I wake up later, my kids get up at night or something, I am so off and it just it just throws me. How do you deal with a phone during the day so that it doesn't become the the thing between you and everybody you see? You know, I think that you got to first get honest with yourself mm -hmm. that it's a tool, mm -hmm. but we've become the tool. Mm -hmm. And you also have to recognize that it is an addiction. And so... For me, recognizing those two things and understanding mm -hmm. that reclaiming my happiness mm -hmm. and my sense of fulfillment in life means I've got to reclaim those spaces mm -hmm. of time mm -hmm. where I'm not giving my attention to something that doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. And so there are a couple quick tips. I plug my phone into the bathroom at night okay. because I can't trust myself. Mm -hmm. So I got to kind of set a trap <laughs> yeah. for my bad behavior. <laughs> this is what I call make change easier. Yeah. Don't rely on willpower. Right. Like set yourself up yep. to win. So I plug it in in the bathroom at night. And then for those of you that are a single parent or you have a job mm -hmm. like Hoda where people might need to reach you in the middle of the night, great. Tell people to call you if there's an emergency. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is people will text you all night long. Nobody calls unless That's they need true. you. That's true. That's true. The second thing you have is have a basket in your kitchen mm -hmm. so that if – you are not using your phone for work, it's put in it there. in the basket. Yeah, it's in there. Because if it's on your body, yep. it will be in your hand yep. and in your face. Yep. The other thing is, is that um, for sleep, an hour before I go to bed, you can have your phone literally set a reminder, time to put the phone down, you deserve a good night's sleep. But again, mm -hmm. not in a shaming way. Yep. Like remind yourself that you deserve to have this time to yourself. Your dreams deserve hmm. a little piece That's of That's a good framing. Your Met your happiness deserves your family deserves this deserves yes that's a good framing yes because I feel like we see it as taking something away no. like no no you deserve this yeah and this is the heart of my work hmm. the heart of my work is we know what to do hmm. we don't know how to do it <laughs> because we're letting our feelings about things and our habits control our behavior yeah and when you start to realize that number one of course you can change. And that 
of course you can make anything happen if you're willing to do the little things every day right. that inch you there. If you're willing to give up your timeline, if you're willing to just keep at it and keep a positive attitude, eventually you end up where you're meant to be. Yeah. Like, and we get so paralyzed, Hoda, about these big things in life, right? The big problems, the big mm -hmm. opportunities that we miss the simple truth. Mm -hmm. Your life is the little things. Mm -hmm. Your life is not winning the Oscar. Your life is what you do first Wednesday. thing in the morning. Yeah. It's how you greet your kids yeah. when you walk in the door. Yeah. And we forget that there's a beauty and a grace to bringing a level of intention to these little things that you're doing mm -hmm. every day. I was on the subway yesterday with my daughter and I'm looking around and every person on that subway was looking at somebody's beach pictures and stuff. And as I was sitting, I was like, look at us. I was like, look what we're doing. Everyone is running away, but nobody, but nobody had any interaction, not even an eye contact, yeah. like, hey, you yeah. know, nothing. Wow. And I feel like that's, you well, know. Well, there's two things that, that, mm -hmm. that I'm going to invite people to mm -hmm. do. As you're going about your life, to make eye contact with somebody and then, like, do a big mm -hmm. cheesy <laughs> smile and try to hold the eye contact <laughs> because it takes about three to four seconds yeah. if somebody's staring at you for their mirror neurons <laughs> to kick in and they literally shoot a smile back. <laughs> you can't not do it. I mean, look at how you're laughing. I know, because because it's so hilarious. Cheesy. I love it. But I feel like... Yeah. We have the opportunity, right, to spread positive energy. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. That's one thing that I want you to do. A second amazing habit mm -hmm. that you could add to that 10-minute morning routine. Mm. Because how you set your day up is how yeah. the day ends up, yeah. okay? At the end of it, after you've set your priority, you've done your meditation, you've given the high five, I want you to text one person in your life or work and tell them, hey, I was just thinking about you. Hmm. Receiving a text from a friend strengthens your friendship hmm. because it feels good to know that somebody that you're not seeing is thinking about you. Hmm. And what happens is you get a return of positive energy. And so that the micro connection mm -hmm. begins with a daily habit of just one text. Hmm. That's it. I liked in your TED talk how you hated the F word and your F word is fine. Yes. Now, I was puzzled by this, I'll be honest, because we see a lot of people, how you doing? Fine, fine. How you doing? You're fine. But you say that is a word that you don't love. No, because fine means bad. Fine means bad? Yeah. It's yeah. like, meh. Yeah. Like, who wants to be meh? <laughs> and most of us say fine because we're too embarrassed to say, honestly, I'm actually yeah. struggling. Yeah. And you know what else we're also really bad about? Mm. Saying things are great. Oh, because we don't, because we're embarrassed that maybe it's not great for the other person. Or we're not used to celebrating ourselves. Oh, right. So we downplay it. And, yeah. you know, you want to pay attention in friendships. Who do you actually share good news with? Mm -hmm. That's more telling about who's a really good mm. friend and who's not. Who do you share good news with? You're right. Because that tells you who you know supports you in your success. Right. That's a good one. They. I was trying this practice the other night that was... You are supposed to say three things before you go to bed that you appreciate about yourself, mm. about yourself. So you'd sit there. Sometimes you're like, myself, what did I? And because you, when you say something, it's bragging. So you don't right. say it out loud because it would seem like what. But as you sit there, I've been trying to do that each night. It's a funny little thing. What did you say last night? Well, yesterday I took my daughter to dinner because we have a date. She's three. And when we go out, we pick somebody in the restaurant who were gonna buy their their meal and the kid, my daughter gets to pick. I said, we don't say a word. Nobody ever knows. That's how we do it. This. So she goes, okay, mama, how about her? She's sitting by herself. I said, that's the one. So we do our thing and we leave and she always says, can we say something? I said, no, we can't. That's the magic. Like it's like a magic trick. I so I so I wrote down, or I said to myself that because yeah. it was, and, and it was that. shared with, hope and she loved it too but whatever the now, now can, can i just say yeah. something yep i want everybody watching and listening mm -hmm. to notice that hoda who is a human being that you absolutely love feels self-conscious as she's telling us this story yeah. and the reason why i'm pointing this out mm -hmm. is that this gets to the heart of what we're all struggling with. This inability 
to really care for, love, and celebrate ourselves. Mm -hmm. That is a beautiful thing that you do. Beautiful. And yet there was this discomfort. Well, I think it's because I tell my daughter that sometimes we just do things to help. Yes. You're not looking for wow or an atta girl. Yeah. But I think I was trying to show her and I'm not look well, you're I'm, showing I'm, all of us but I was trying to show how to have yeah. magic. Yeah. And also to to realize like sometimes it's not like I feel like there's a lot of in life reflected glory. Mm. Let me get close to that person and now I feel the light. Look at me. Right. I'm next to them. I'm right. with them. So I want them to know, like, your light's inside. Like, you don't need to be next to someone who has it. You have it. Yes. So, you know, you asked me earlier about mm -hmm. purpose. Yeah. And so I want to add this to it. Yeah. So I also think that everybody's purpose, when I said everyone's purpose is the same, to share their story. But at the end of the day, all of our stories are about love. Hmm. Because love the way that I think about love is love is simply caring about something. Mm -hmm. This podcast is an act of love. Mm -hmm. The way that you do the dinner is an act of love mm -hmm. because you care about another person. The fact that you tell your daughter, no, we don't share that because it's about the magic is caring for mm -hmm. her. And this yeah. is all expressions of love. Mm -hmm. the, the, the hardest place to actually show that mm -hmm. same love is mm -hmm. for yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. It's hard to say out loud. Uh -huh. Like, I'm proud of myself because of this. Or, or I deserve, I deserve these or, 10 I'm minutes. Worthy. Yeah, I'm worthy of this. Yes. Or of, yeah. Here's what I want everyone to hear. This can and should be the best year of your life because you deserve that. Mm. And if you take the time to get quiet and to truly imagine what you want your life to look like a year from now. Yep. It's not going to happen overnight. It happens over time. You know, there's a simple practice, start, stop, yeah. continue. Okay. Tell me about that. You're going to just write on one page, stop, on one page, start, on one page, continue. Okay. If this is going to be the best year of your life, whatever best means for you, the happiest, the most mm -hmm. fulfilling, the most connected, mm -hmm. what do you need to stop doing? All of the things. It, it could be the way you think. Mm -hmm. It could be who you hang out with. Mm -hmm. It could be the stuff you put in your body. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, the way you spend your time. Mm -hmm. What are you going to stop doing? Okay. Second, what are you going to start doing? Hmm. And if you don't know, here's a simple trick. Um, look around and see who in the world are you inspired or jealous of? Because inspiration and jealousy are the same thing, basically. Okay. Inspiration is what you feel when you allow yourself to get in touch with what you want. Mm -hmm. Jealousy is what you feel when you let your self-doubt and your mm -hmm. lack of worth not let you mm -hmm. imagine what you want. And so if you can reframe jealousy as just like literally blocked desire, mm. use that as a tool to look around at the world. And we live in this amazing moment of time where if you're inspired by somebody... Whatever it is that they're doing or that they have that inspires or that you're jealous of, great. That means you'd like that too. So reverse engineer it. Mm, and then you out. have kind of a path. So the things to start are actions that align with where you're going and with the person you imagine yourself to be, not with where you are now. Oh. And so that's the start comma. Mm, and the continue, continue is anything in your life that's working, anything in your yeah. life that brings you energy. Anything in your life that aligns with where you're going and the person you want to become, mm -hmm. you're going to continue doing that. And there's your map. And then when you don't feel like it, five, four, three, two, one. Use yeah. the five second rule to push through that garbage and take the action. Yeah. And nobody, you, you make a good point. It's hard to get moving and do things. <laughs> Let me tell you the truth about motivation. It's complete garbage. You have been told a lie, Hoda, because we have been made to believe that we have to be motivated in order to change. It's the opposite. You have to act before you feel like it. Mm -hmm. Motivation is what you feel after you get <laughs> done with the workout. Yeah. I want you to understand a simple fact. And the fact is you're never, ever, ever going to feel like doing the things you don't want to do. If you sit around waiting to feel ready, you will wait until you're dead. Mm -hmm. And when you stop listening to your feelings... And you align your actions with the kind of person you want to be right. and where you want to go, you will get there.
Man, I'm motivated. Thanks, Thank you. Mel. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.